what you see in front of you right now is a trim sheet. A trim sheet is a versatile tiling texture that is set up to be used in numerous ways throughout your level. As you can see, we have a few distinct areas, such as these stone slabs here on the bottom, these uh, typical, uh, this regular brick pattern here in the middle, and then we have this top here, which is like some sort of trim design that could be used for edges or uh, really whatever you would want it to be used for in your game. Because you don't have to think of this as like a static texture. Uh, typically, you'll put it on an object that isn't that hasn't been uh, UV unwrapped or it has but in a very basic way to be used in like long horizontal or vertical uh, designs. Let's go ahead and create a new substance graph here. All right, so we have our new substance graph open here. And what we have is we have three different tile generators being fed into height blends, which are controlled by the shape mask. Wherever that shape mask is, is controlling where the top height is popping through on the graph. So right here, we have our uh, rectangle with vertical tiling turned off, it's only horizontal. And if you wanna change those, what you have to do is you click this blue box, go to absolute, then you can change the tiling mode. So once you have that, you can set this up to basically control where these blends are happening lined up so we're going to keep it there and it's being fed into these uh other these vertical slabs here that are going to be chunky that could be used as like bases or really whatever you would want in your level um and that's all being fed into a levels node which is then piped into your typical outputs you got your normal high pass grayscale for roughness ao etc so we're going to want to make this look a little bit cooler so First thing we're going to want to do is establish a mini graph on one of these tile generators and we're going to turn that into a tool that we can then reuse throughout our, uh, our graph here, which will speed up the process quite a bit. So let's break this up. We want to get some edge chipping here and probably the easiest way to do that inside of Substance is using a slow blur. So we pull up the spots node. Oh, lower the roughness here quite a bit. Change the seed to a slow blur grayscale. We're gonna plug this grayscale in here and slope into that. And that there we go. It's done. So we're gonna lower this intensity quite a bit. And if it's all right, so it's taking too much, so that means that the roughness is not high enough. So we'll go back to that. So we'll open this, see what, all right. So something along, because we want larger chips first. So that's pretty decent. We can also change the disorder here. So it's not as uniform, which is probably a good idea. And then we're also going to put a levels node on here to fine tune this further. So we'll open that up and pull this out. And as you can see, as we increase the contrast, all right, so you don't want any edges because the sharper it is, it'll start creating those lines, but we can get pretty close. So that way we have decent chipping here. So if we plug our graph in with that slope blur, you can see that we started getting these edges breaking up which is pretty cool um even being that subtle it does a lot for us um and what you can do with that is we can actually set this up to go from so this these larger kind of chips and there may be a few more fine spots uh, and then we can add some cracks so we'll go ahead and repeat this process so we'll do a slow blur ground and then plug that in to a grayscale We'll go ahead and duplicate this. We'll up the scale, up the disorder, change the seed. All right, same thing, samples all the way up, intensity down. Real low. All right, so roughness should be up even higher. All right, it's pretty intense. So the way we can fine tune where this blend is happening is we can take blend node so we're like okay we want 
we want this on top to be blended in back into the regular slow blur grayscale. So we're going to blend what's in our foreground, our background. And where the blending is happening, we can just use a grunge map here. Let's do like a grunge 08. Okay, lower the balance down and the contrast. So where the new chipping is going to happen is mainly where these uh, higher values are. So plug that in. So now we can see that it's not everywhere. In fact, I'll lower that balance down even further and level this out. It's pretty intense. Still want some whites, but not as much. Okay. So I will plug the graph in there. You can see that we get a few areas that are broken up quite a bit more than the rest. Okay. Now for some cracks. This is chipping. Let's do some cracks. All right. Uh, let's do the cells. Four. Okay. We're going to plug this into an edge detect. We're going to lower the width, lower the roundness. You can see that we get all these little edges. We're going to want them to be a little bit bigger. Okay. That's good. And we're going to do a directional warp on these a few times actually. So one, we're gonna do it to just break these up. So we can just do like a Gaussian blur, Gaussian noise, rather. A little bit bigger. That way it's gonna warp these, not be so perfect. Okay, there's that one. Well, and we'll just do this again, so. Duplicate both of these, and this time we'll uh, make it a little bit tighter. Up the disorder, change the seed. All right, it's a little intense. It's fine; it doesn't have to be crazy. And then one more using a crystals. It's a pretty sweet node. Oops! All right, plug that in there. Alright, you see it gets a little bit more of this sharp effect. It's nice. Change the direction there. Lower the intensity. Right. So we went from this to that. So that's that's gonna do a lot for us. Alright. So we'll move this out of the way too. Because ultimately everything in this chunk is gonna be turned into a graph. So now what we're going to do is we're going to warp this again, except this time the intensity input is going to be the tiles itself. So you'll see what this does. We'll up this to 50. All right. So now none of these lines should ever connect. So now if we do a blend, I'll plug this in here. In fact, we could even use this as a dome mask if we want to. All right, just to show you how we're, we're starting now. We're gonna use subtract, actually. What we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna invert this. So now, you can sort of see where it would chip away. Okay. So even though we're using this as a mask, we can also go ahead and break it up even further. We'll do a, uh, do a clouds too. All right. And then we'll subtract that. So that way, wherever this will, this will be our new mask, we'll plug it in. And then you can see that where the cracks are happening, one, they don't ever connect, which is really, well, this kind of implies that, but what, what if you do see that, you can take the uh, intensity and just crank it up even further. Okay. So now if we take this graph, plug it in here. It's still a little too intense. We kind of got them a little bit all over the place still. Um, so 
So we could take that even further. Let's see. How much of this do we really want? All right, so we can just go ahead and do another blend. Take more out of this. Do a moisture noise. Random seed, disorder, scale. I'm gonna subtract even more from that. Right. Maybe a little less. Let's try that to start. All right. It's pretty subtle. Pretty subtle. Um, maybe a little more. Let's see. Let's see what feels good. It's because we can make these cracks a little more interesting here soon too. Let's too shabby so what we can do is we, can, we could also wherever this first slow blur is happening this could be where the cracks are as well so you can see they kind of cluster around and then what we can do is we can actually just take away from the actual cracks themselves let's do a, a dodge and noise again multiply it all right that's giving us a better look now we can take that plug it in all right so it's one it's clustering around where the cracks or the chipping was but we we lessened it quite a bit right. so now we can go ahead and make those cracks a little bit cooler so before this distortion well subtraction we're going through slope blur a right here slope blur grayscale grayscale extra noise actually we can do we can probably do a crystal again Let's see what this gives us samples density so this is just going to make the cracks have a little bit more interest and depth. So we'll feed that into that. So now if we go to our cracks, you can see that they're not perfectly straight. And they're not just straight up and down. They have some, some interest. Okay. Now, we could probably soften up. Our first chipping so if we go back to this lower the roughness slightly there we go kind of rounded that out some and then even with our slope blur for the crystals what we're gonna want to do is uh at least for the slope blur we're gonna blur that a little bit too Maybe a little bit more. Let's see. There we go. Just a little cleaner. Perfect. All right. So that's good. So that's some of the, the bigger forms being taken care of here. I think nothing too insane, but subtlety goes a long way. All right. So now we're going to want to create some surface detail here actually before that we let's create a mortar so you can see in between these bricks there's not really anything going on here let's use the change so let's see where would be a good spot to plop that i guess yeah we can just we can just do it right here all right so Let's take our tile generator. Let's do a histogram scan. Actually, let's just do a levels. I'll do a level thing. And up that. All right. So we created a mask. We're going to invert this mask. That way we have the area where the mortar is going to be. We're going to blend some. We'll just do a, a moisture noise. Random, 
up that scale slightly, this order, and then, all right, so you can see it's being added there. Uh, maybe we can keep the scale bigger, and then we can also make it a little bit more distinct. Oh, not being plugged in, whoops. All right, let's see here, a little more contrast. There we go, all right. So it's not exactly what we need because let's just do this. Oh yeah, there we go. I have to clamp this, okay. That way there was no, none of that bleeding. Okay, so there we go. So we clamped it down. Now we're just gonna blend this back in. All right, being blended right there. Copy, that's fine. Put that in the slope layer. So now we got this mortar. Yeah. Pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. Let's see. All right, so we got all of that lined up now. Let's let's lower our AO here really quick. Up the samples, but then the radius should be a lot lower. Let's do something like you know, two, maybe. A little less height depth. There we go. We can even change our uniform color a little bit as well. There we go. Okay. Like that. Kind of see where we're going here. So, let's do our surface noise. Let's do a blend. Let's do a concrete. Grunge concrete, change the seed, do some a little bit more dirt spec opacity, scratch opacity, and eh, let's lower the scratches. <clears throat> Reduce the sharpness, and I can up that intensity variation just to make it cooler. And there we go. Okay. So we're gonna put this on top of what we have so far. Oh, no. All right. Let's do a overlay. Reduce that a lot. Okay. So this way, on the bricks that are lower value, I believe, you're going to see a little bit more of that grunge. The higher ones are not as broken up, but they still have some variance. So that's the first pass there. Now we're gonna do a moisture noise on top of this. Moisture noise is an awesome noise. As you can tell, I've used it a whole bunch. So, blend this. We're gonna break this up to do a grunge. Do a grunge 14. Just kidding. That looks insane. Um, Let's just do clouds. Clouds three. Change the seed of the disorder. And then we'll do a uh, do a levels. Get this closer together. Alright. So then we'll take that and we'll subtract that from the moisture noise. Subtract. So that's going to be the mask. Right. So we're still going to put this one on top. But this will be the mask on how they're blended. And then we do this. All 
right? We'll make it more subtle. So now if we look, we got our chipping, some cracks, a little bit of that concrete roughness. Okay, so it's, it's getting somewhere. In fact, this would be a decent place to where we could even start uh, seeing how this graph would work on other areas. So let's do that. So what you do is you take everything that you want to be inside your graph. So in that case, it's going to be all of all of this right here. Okay. You get everything. Okay, cool. So you have everything you have uh, that you want in your graph selected. Right click it. Create graph from selection. We're gonna call this uh, brick detailer. All right. So if we open it up, just a little warning. Um, it's because we need to specify a few things. Really only two things. Now that we could get more in depth and set up a whole bunch of different parameters to be used inside of here, um, which I'll show you how to do that in a future video. So we're going to do an input, grayscale, because that's what's going to go in here. All right, let's make sure that, yep, just hold shift and bring it over. That way everything that was connected will be there too. And then where this is coming out, do an output. And typically I'll leave something in here where I can troubleshoot if I need to. We're going to save this. Uh, yeah, substance graph, that's fine. So now if we go back to our substance graph. Our brick, brick detailer here you can drag it out and you can see where that goes in it's right there so we'll plug this right here and then we'll plug our tile generator into it and now everything else we can just delete it's gonna keep your graph real clean it's gonna save you a lot of time because now and take our brick detailer, drop another one down. So I'm trying to figure out where everything is. Uh, oh, there it is. Okay. So we'll do the same thing here. Plug that brick detailer in. All right. So the top one also got those details, and then we can do it to the bottom as well. I will change a few things. All right, so like for example, for the bottom one, we open our brick detailer. Uh, might have to make a different version because we didn't set up. Okay, I'll go ahead and show you uh, how to create a few different parameters. So we'll just do this quickly. If you open up your brick detailer, one of the main things we want to change is our uh, crack size. So we're going to open up so we're going to right click cells 4, hit expose parameters, we want the scale and the disorder, that's fine. We could name these, uh, let's just cracks underscore, alright, and then let's see another, another good one we could do would be Could really do a lot of these but uh well, actually before we do all that there is something you can do that's even quicker um even though i think now we should have this so first we will check this out change the scale so we want larger cracks if they're going to be on there okay We can also change the seed so everything on there will vary up that's pretty good i like that and then we'll do the same thing to the other one so brick detailer we can give these a little bit bigger cracks as well all right i've changed the seed Now we can see that we got our, our shape kind of down here. Now, let's 
see if we create a mortar. All right, the mortar is for the top, but the mortar is not coming through the bottom, and that's because there's no gap, which is fine. That's okay. It's reading pretty well. Let us start working on some color. So, as you can see, using this brick detailer really just saves a ton of space in your graph, keeps it super clean. Um, what I like to do if I'm uh, starting to color my texture is uh, using gradient maps and making sure that the image you're using has as much lighting and shadow information pulled away from it. That way you're getting like the true colors. Um, and one of the ways you can do that, and I'll, I'll show you here. Let's see if we get oh, shop up. All right, here we go. Would be something like this. So um, in Photoshop, if you were to drag over an image you wanted to use, uh, if you go up to, let's make sure it's visible. If you go up to image, adjustments, shadows, and highlights. Just make sure that all this is turned down to zero. Okay. Um, and then what you can do is, which is what we'll do here right now, I'll show you. Um, I'm gonna do a color picker on that. So I'm gonna put that on the other screen here. Okay. Plug our height map into our gradient map. Open that up. Gradient editor, hit gradient. Let's see how this looks. I'll be a little strong at first, so that's okay. We'll add more detail. So, all right. That's a little bit intense, but that's okay. What we can do is do a blend. And we'll just get some, uh, let's do grunge concrete again. And we'll do the same thing. We'll do a, uh, gradient map for this as well a little more subtle um, we'll blend these together so we want to kind of blink them and make them feel like they're one cohesive thing all right Starting to get there. We'll go back to this gradient map. We'll do agent cell. We'll lower the saturation a little bit. Not that much. Maybe like 0.8. Okay. And now from here, let's see how that's really looking. Not insane. I'm gonna pick a new gradient on there. Let's see. Let's see how that's feeling. There we go. That's that's not too bad. Cool. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a dirt. And the dirt requires an AO curvature. Really, really just those two to get going. So let's grab our AO. We're gonna do a curvature normal here. Do a curvature smooth. All right, so this is gonna be where the dirt is. All right. So we'll move this kind of out of the way. We're going to create a gradient map as well for the dirt. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to blend these. We're going to use this as the mask. At first, we might not use it. Okay. We'll plug this in, see how strong that is. It's not too bad. So we might take the mask away. Do another version, a little bit lighter of a color. Lightness. Okay. 
here. So this one will be the overlay. Over that. I'll plug that one in. So now we got a little bit of color on top too. So that feels a little strong. What we could do is we could take that and plug into the levels. And really just bring that up a little bit. Oh yeah, that's feeling way better. All right, from here we can go ahead and start adding some edge damage to kind of highlight uh, a few areas of these bricks. Um, it should help pull the texture together a little bit. So an easy way to do that is to pull your curvature out, turn that into a gradient map. You can leave it as grayscale, um, which we could tweak if we want to here in a minute. And we'll take that map itself and level it out a little bit to highlight some of these areas. So. Alright, let's clamp this, pull the blacks up, whites down, alright there we go. So now, blend that on top, alright, so pretty strong, so we'll um, isolate this even further. To really just pull out the edges so if we look back this is before the edge damage and this is after just giving us a little bit extra work with there um, there is a few other techniques we could throw a little bit of variance on here maybe like uh, using a moisture noise and leveling this out as well actually let's use a histogram scan for this and plug it in there we're gonna up this just a little bit there isn't even that much and then we'll, let's change the seed and disorder and then from here let's do a gradient map and we can actually if we want to we can use a previous one let's see how that looks let's duplicate this gradient map plug this in here see what we get let's blend that on top we got our opacity here. Blend that. Plug that in. All right, not too shabby. Um, we may up the values a little bit here for the mask. Bring that down. Up that. We just get a little bit more breakup, a little bit more grunge on here. Don't have to do this, but this could be a few different techniques that you could do to kind of bring your texture together. Um, but we could definitely take this a lot further, but this, this video is more of a surface level view on how you can quickly start uh, concepting different texture or trim sheet designs uh, and really just the amount of resources available. I'll go through a lot more specific and uh, like really high fidelity techniques to push these textures even further, but hopefully there were some tips and tricks in here to get you started so hopefully you enjoyed this video don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell and let me know what kind of content you would like to see next all right guys until next time see you.